right, everybody, welcome aboard here to the Sports Talk Nation. Michael Cohen here with you. Obviously, the talk of discussion here today is regards to the Zach Wilson injury, as now we finally have official word. I have a lot of thoughts about what went on over the last 14, 15 hours or so uh, from the time Zach Wilson got hurt to now. But the official word, as it has been reported now by the beat writers, guys like Carter Hughes, guys like Rich Semini, Brian Costello, reporting that Zach Wilson will undergo orthospathic orthroscopic surgery on his right knee and is expected to miss two to four weeks as it is diagnosed as a bone bruise with a tear with a meniscus meniscus tear adding that the meniscus does need a full repair only a trim that is the official word on zach wilson's health for that right now as he left the ball game with a knee injury and There are a lot of thoughts in my head. I'm going to have a guest on in just a few minutes just to talk about this. But my number one thought is this. Before getting into Zach Wilson, this was the prime example of social media run amok. It really was. We saw in just a matter of moments, just after Zach Wilson got hurt and walked off the field with the training staff to the locker room, within moments after that, all of a sudden, everyone has sources. Everyone's got contacts who are telling them Zach Wilson is out for the season. He has a torn ACL. We had one guy who is a respected uh, former NFL doctor going online saying that upon looking on video, he's determined that it's a torn ACL. And then, of course, everyone runs with it, and it runs wild, and it gets wider and wider. And you're seeing other other you know people who have the blue check marks, if you will, on Twitter running around with the Zach Wilson has a torn ACL. We haven't, had a, we haven't even had confirmation about what the knee injury was at that point. So it was really crazy last night to watch that. So you saw social media running amok. On top of that, now you have the injury to Zach Wilson. It is Now we know what the extent of the injury is. It could it, there, there is a chance, as has been reported, that there could be uh, an extension as far as the timetable for him to come back, depending on what else they find during surgery. But the fact is, he's only going to miss a small amount of time. He'll be back probably by, if not by the, uh, if not by the end of September, maybe even sooner than that, and he will be on his way back. The Jets' quarterback situation is much different than it was, let's say, a few years ago with Sam Darnold. They have a a, a Super Bowl winning quarterback in Joe Flacco. They have Mike White, who played well here last year. It's a different situation. So even if Zach Wilson misses an extended period of time, let's not act like the entire season is over yet. Just getting rolling, just getting started, and it doesn't mean the Jets still can't do things positive until Zach Wilson comes back, who a quarterback and a player who we're still trying to figure out what he is at the NFL level. So those are just some of my initial thoughts right now. He is on his way. Wilson's injury at the moment not as severe as many people had feared. uh, And hopefully he is on his way back very, very soon. Right now, let's bring in my guest. And that, of course, is... uh, one of the top Jet fans that I know, Dan Feuerstein, uh, of the, formerly the Jets podcast with Rick Lachlan, a show that one day may return at some point in the future. You never know. I'm teasing it. But <laughs> um, no, but seriously, before before we get into Zach Wilson and you know what the injury is going to mean moving forward, the last 14 hours, Dan, I said this in the open, was the best prime example of social media run amok because for minutes – not even hours after after the injury happened, minutes after the injury happened, all we heard about was how Zach Wilson had torn his ACL and the season was over. I understand knee injuries, you have to assume the worst. I get that. You never know with them. And especially after Mekhi Becton, the initial diagnosis was what, four to six weeks and then turned into a season loss. But we got to calm down, people. This this was social media run amok last night. It really was. Let me just go to the social media point of, of things. This is what happens with today's fans. Yes. Is that when you have a social media account and you want to believe in all the hype, you want to believe in all the hoopla, you know, the hype is real, the hype is real. And then when you see an injury like that and we're all speculating, and even I thought at the time that it could be an ACL, the way he went down. Right. You know, non contact, turf monster, or, or, you know, step wrong. But to go off and say, the season is over, that we're not going to have Zach Wilson for the entire year. It's like we have no idea what the injury was. And until we get true, true reports 
from the medical doctors that are examining this, giving him the MRI, then we shouldn't go overboard the way that, that they, Jet fans have. And that's the problem we have here. Everyone went off the railing. We have still two, two capable quarterbacks. Yes. If Zach Wilson was going to be out for the entire year, which he won't. Which he won't. And, you know, as we all know now, it's going to be, it's a meniscus tear. They're going to trim the meniscus and he'll be back within two to four weeks. Now, if there's further damage, as was reported this morning, then they'll extend the timetable for him to until his return. But the fact is, he's not out for the season as was originally feared. My problem is, is that everyone jumped on the bandwagon so fast, so quickly, without any real confirmation yet. And even when Salah came out and said, you know, he, he looks like it's a tad, it looks like his ACL is still intact. We'll find out in the morning. You still have people saying, well, the videos looked didn't look good. He must be still out for the season. Like, come on, you gotta, you, you gotta, you gotta let the coach speak. Let the reporters do their job, find out what's going on, and that's the bottom line. Now, as you said, my issue here with Zach Wilson is we still don't know what kind of quarterback he's going to be. And if he had missed a significant chunk of the season, if not the entire season, it certainly would have been a setback for him and his development. Absolutely no question about it. Whether that meant the Jets season is over, I don't know but it certainly changes the narrative of their entire season. It certainly changes the narrative for Joe Douglas, for Robert Sala moving forward to a point where they have to find a way to win and win with guys like Mike White and Joe Flacco in the twilight of his career. You know, Flacco's a still capable quarterback. Mike White has shown some, pro showed some promise last year, especially in the Bengals game. You have to, you would, if, if Zach Wilson, this again, if it was worst case scenario, you would have to play it out. Now it's not the worst case scenario. We could see Zach Wilson within sometime within the next month, maybe even within week two or three, maybe even week one. I don't know. We'll see. If he's going to miss a couple of games of the regular season, you just kind of you bite the bullet and you get through it with either Flacco or White or some combination of the two of them, and you see where you are. I don't know if the Jets' record would have been any different through the first two, three weeks of the season with Zach Wilson compared to what they may end up having to put out there. We'll see what happens, but the fact is – it isn't as severe as, it, as people had feared. And now we move. Everyone has to just move on and try, try to see where this team can go from here. And let me just say this. And I agree with you that everyone's expecting Zach Wilson to make this huge jump. We'll see. We, we, you and I, we believe we haven't seen enough of Zach Wilson to say this could happen. Do we think he's going to make that significant jump the way Joe Burrow did? We don't know. We really don't know. And I'm not saying I'm going against Zach Wilson. I'm, I th do I think he's the future of this team? It's a yes, but it's all about the weapons he has. It's all about the offensive line that has kept him upright and avoid him being sacked. And it's also him not just to make the throws, but to not make the poor throws. Right. That's the whole point. We expected the mistakes in his rookie year. It looked like it slowed down for him at the second half of the season. Great. That's wonderful. But there's still not enough. Once again, we only have how many games in the regular season to make sure that Zach Wilson can make the Jets into a playoff contender. I'm not saying a Super Bowl contender, a playoff contender right now, because you've got to crawl before you walk. Yep. And it looks like everyone wants him to run before he crawls. Uh, that's the world we live in in the NFL. You know, everyone wants the wants the the quick fix, and I'm sure people are going to point to like, the fact that Trey Lance looked good last night and that Trevor Lawrence looked good last night for Jacksonville and San Francisco, respectively. And I'm going to say, oh well, see those two guys, they're, they're ahead of the game. Look what's going on. I'm like, calm down, calm down. Let's just get to the regular season first. Let's see where we are there, and you know, let's see how Flacco and or White, if the, if we are at that point on opening day. If they're one of those two has to play an opening day, let's see how they do. Now, here's another question that's going to get thrown out there because you know it's going to get asked, so we'll throw it out there. If, let's say, just for the sake of argument, that Joe Flacco goes out there, plays well against the, his old team, the Baltimore Ravens, and wins that game, and they're not so sure that Zach Wilson's ready, let's just say Flacco gets another start week two, wins that game, what the heck do you do then? And that was the same question we were asked last year with Mike White. And my answer at the time was simply, you ride the hot hand until, until proven otherwise. 
And I feel, unfortunately for Zach Wilson in this situation, he's going to end up in that the Jets are in that same spot again. You know, if it's either Flacco or White, if they're playing well early, you'll unfortunately have to ride that out. Yes, you want Zach Wilson to be the franchise. You want him to be the face of the franchise. But this is the reality of the NFL. If you find ways to win, that's all that really comes down to it at the end of the day. That's the truth. I mean, look, look, this is professional sports. This is the NFL. Drew Bledsoe lost his job because Mo Lewis crunched him. And then the Tom Brady era Who? began. Who? Who's that? What's his name? What? Mo Lewis? No, the other guy. Tom who? Oh, Tom Drew who? Bledsoe? Tom who? I've heard that name. I've heard that name. Isn't that the yeah. guy who's taking personal time off? I, I forgot his name. <laughs> he was. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, look, he was supposed to be the top quarterback for the New England Patriots. And then here comes, and then when he got injured by the Jets, by Mo Lewis, the Tom Brady era began. And, you know, the, the old ruling is you're not supposed to lose your job on an injury. And Bill Belichick said, to hell with that rule. I'm sticking with Tom and won a Super Bowl and, you know, the rest is history. So, okay. you know, look, I, I don't if if you have a hot hand in either Mike White or Joe Flacco to start the season, which one of those two will and you use the hot hand, like you said, that's what it is. I know there's people going to listen to that. What we just talked about, say, oh, my God, you guys are crazy. Uh, we're playing devil's advocate here. So we know that we, we both know the chances that Flacco or White go out there and let's just say start four, uh, start two and oh or three. No, probably not going to happen. Probably not going to happen. We're just playing devil's advocate. Hey, if they start well, you know, what do you do? Because that question is going to get asked anyway. But exactly. the fact is, we, we the fact is, I think for Jet fans, they have to take a sigh of relief that the injury to Zach Wilson isn't as severe as, as it was initially uh, presumed. By everybody yes. on, on Twitter, and that the Jets can still reclaim this development of this player and see what he can do in year two to really show that hey, look, I am the, the court, not just the quarterback of the future, a term that I'm getting tired of hearing, but the quarterback of the present. And that's what we got to really see what from him. Exactly. And I, and I agree with that. Look, I still believe Zach Wilson is the future quarterback and the franchise quarterback of the New York Jets. If he wasn't drafted in the first round two years ago, uh, a year ago, I should say, um, you know, by by Joe Douglas, who believes in his abilities, who believes in his skill, who believes in his um, uh, abilities to when he senses he's in trouble, he gets out of the pocket and tries to extend the play. If we didn't believe in Zach Wilson or if Joe Douglas didn't believe in Zach Wilson, then, you know, what's the whole point, you know? Either you keep, but still, though, we need to see in front of us what he can do, not what we presume he can do. That's the problem. And that's where I think Jeff fans need to understand. Stop going off the railings either on a uh, overly hyped positive vibe or an overly hyped negative vibe. You got to just be in the middle, got to be grounded, and you got to watch what's going to happen. Daniel Feuerstein, the Feuerstein's fire, keeping it in the middle. He is not extreme at all, folks. Dan Feuerstein, I want to thank you so much for coming here on the board on the Sports Talk Nation. You're always welcome, my friend. Thank you very much, my friend.